crack the mysteries of the Earth. Discover the energy that drives a planet and builds mountains. Uncover buried treasure and see what makes mountains blow. Find out what shapes the top of the Earth and explore the secret world below with me, Nick, on the rocks. Mount Stewart is at the center of a fascinating mystery connected to one of the greatest discoveries in the history of science. A hundred years ago, they thought the world's land masses were always where they are today. But this man, Alfred Wegener, thought otherwise. When Wegener looked at the globe, it appeared to him that parts of some continents fit into other parts of other continents. He suggested that long ago there was only one continent. He called it Pangaea. Almost everybody else thought Wegener was nuts. Wegener spent the rest of his career, another couple decades, going around the globe trying to find evidence to support this idea. And unfortunately, he died in the 1930s in Greenland on one of these expeditions collecting evidence and never did see his ideas accepted by the geology community. In general, mountain ranges rise in response to crustal compression. And the compression is coming from collisions between plates. We're lifting the rock up. And if we lift this rock up, the stuff at the top is going to be the first to get eroded away. And those core rocks in Mount Stewart are the center of an ongoing geological debate. It's not part of the Cascades, geologically. Geographically, we can lump it with the Cascades. But the rock is way too old for the Cascades story. Cascades have only been there for 40 million years, only. And the rock in Mount Stewart is 93 million years old. A lot of evidence has accrued over the years that major chunks of the western edge of North America didn't form as part of North America. They formed out in the Pacific someplace and were transported by plate tectonics, generally from the south to the north, and then they were plastered onto the continent and then sheared up. Mount Stewart was part of an exotic terrain that attached itself to the western edge of North America. But where did it come from? Geologists at Western Washington University believe the rocks in Mount Stewart were formed far from here. I drove over to Western to visit Merle Beck and Bernie Hausen in their paleomagnetic laboratory. Merle in particular has spent more than 40 years on this topic, collecting samples from Mount Stewart itself and analyzing that rock for a paleomagnetic signature. I got in pretty early. I'm not a founding father of paleomagnetism, but I'm close. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, a, I'm an elderly nephew sort of thing. <laughs> I got an NSF grant and I worked on rocks in the Cascades. And there it was, Mount Stewart. So we went up there and we drilled in about a little more than half a dozen places. These granodiorite samples are part of their collection. It triggered the whole controversy. And it's such a beautiful rock. Yes, it is. Paleomagnetically as well as aesthetically. Yeah. It gives you the nicest directions you've ever seen. But those directions came as a shock to the scientific world. If their initial results were to be believed, the rock in Mount Stewart originated more than a thousand miles south of where it is today. Everybody said, this guy's nuts. And, and the problem was mainly that they didn't understand how paleomagnetism worked. Is Merle right? Well, another group of scientists say, wait a minute, we don't buy that. Terrains move along faults, but we can't find a big one that Mount Stewart might have slid along. Merle Beck has his answers to those doubts, and the skeptics have more questions, so the controversy continues. This is a major unsolved mystery right here north of our campus with that landmark that everybody knows. How far did that thing travel? There'll be a younger crop of folks with some new techniques that will contribute to this and will eventually get a bright person to find just the right key piece of evidence that will put the whole discussion to rest. <laughs>